Welcome, friends. Episode number 151 of the Daily Watch Talks. Your weekly dose of watch talk is what we said uh, previously. And yeah. that's also what's going to happen today because uh, we don't have a specific theme or topic. We're just going to discuss with you and share with you uh, a series of novelties because quite a lot happened this week in terms of novelties. Uh, yeah, but also, you know, I was just talking about how you didn't join us at Omega yesterday. So I brought these, oh, they broke Omega macarons for you. Oh, wow. my wife will love it. Broken macarons. Yeah, well, yeah. sorry about that. Thank you so much. That was just beautiful. That's a bit local. of Omega. Thank you so much. I put it in the camera here. I, I told my girlfriend yesterday that, that, that I was going to a uh, Omega dinner. And she said, she goes, oh, why? Because like it's it's the opening, they're celebrating the opening of the boutique, and she's like, "How many times do they celebrate the opening of the boutique?" Because we've been there quite a you know several times, already. many many times. Yeah. But then yesterday we had a beautiful dinner. Uh, of course, we met in the boutique, and you know, friends of the house, artists, uh, uh, actors, uh, A-listers, and B-listers, and me, C-listers, were there attending. So we met in the boutique, and then we were driven to the planetarium. So we had dinner actually in the planetarium, and then we watched a movie. So it was a movie about the moon landing, and and you know my hairs seriously they they raised what do you say that? The, yeah, my, goosebumps. I had goosebumps yeah, yeah, when yeah. I saw that. The planetarium, of course, is what 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 the name indicates is planetarium. Uh, so it was on this huge surrounding screen, and to me, you know, what happened in 1969 is one of the biggest feats of mankind if you like and watching it in there was just incredible and then of course we had popcorn and we had these great macarons and uh, i brought this they didn't look like this when i put it in the back this morning so i thought since nick wasn't there here's a here's a little celebration okay but it was the moon landing but now they're also on mars right with the speedmaster yes that's a very cool watch they yeah it's titanium yeah i like the you know it's not the first time they're the working x33 with titanium. um uh what called it mars timer it's the official mars timer, mars exactly, timer. Yeah. so it's a uh, it's a quartz but it actually monitors the solar uh, uh flows on mars and the time on mars the funny thing is i i, I ignored the launch of that yeah. So, so our good friend Nacho from Fratello, he tagged me in a picture that he posted on Instagram. Yeah. And I wrote to him, what a cool piece. I thought it was a piece unique or, you know, um, a prototype or something like that of the first X33. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know it was a novelty. And then all of a sudden during the day, you know, the official press photos and then ticked in in my inbox as well. And uh, are we going to go to Mars? Are we going to have a, a, a colony of people living on Mars? I don't know. But Omega did a watch that celebrates Mars. Actually, they're not the second first one. one because, yeah, it's the uh, second one. Uh, our friend um, uh, Konstantin Chaikin also did a Mars timer. Completely mechanical a few years ago. Mechanical? Yeah. I can. I, will, uh, I think we, Eric's gonna put a picture of that watch. I had it right on my there. wrist once. It was actually a, a, a triangle watch. It's, oh, it's that really, one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I actually thought it was a food pyramid. It was a. It wasn't a food pyramid. No. Um, okay. Well, now we're in indie zone anyway. Uh, Did you say indie zone? Indie zone. That's funny. Independent watch zone. My good friends at Uwerk, uh launched uh, the. Ooh, you are 120 Spock this week. Yes. And I was able, luckily, like some others as well, to already see the watch uh, uh, late August in, um, in Geneva during Geneva Watch Days. And actually, the 120 is the successor of the 110. So it is really an important watch in, um, um, in the lineup of, of Uhrwerk. It's not another limited edition, a run of 20, 20 pieces. They say the watch is limited by production. Mm -hmm. And I heard from Pierre that basically that will mean four pieces per month. Four pieces. That they will produce of the UR120 Spock. And now, why is it called Spock? Well, because of uh, Star Trek. Yeah, because of Star Trek. In Star Trek, they launched in the 60s the Vulcan salute. That is the, the V-shaped salute. Uh, I didn't know. I'm not. I'm not. A, a, so is it that 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 salute. Yeah, that salute. Yeah. That's and salute. and apparently Mr. Spock uh, did that. And the reason why the 120 is called Spock is because you know the cubes that they use to to read time to yeah. to tell the hours. 
the cubes on the 120 are not only turning, we've been there, we know that from our work, but they're also splitting. And when they split, you see the V-shape uh, when, when the, 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 the cube goes to another hour. Um, it, 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 you could also call it a Pac-Man. It, it, it looks a bit like a Pac-Man. That's for the... We're, for, we're from the... Yeah, yeah but that's, that's how they connect yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. And that's also how they split. So they yeah. open up and then they split to a new hour. Yeah. And then they go through the wandering of the, of the minutes. So well, it's, 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 it's another take on wandering hours, I it's, guess. It's another take. It's the next evolution. The watch is uh, 100,000 Swiss. So it's comfortably between UR100, which is the entry level UREC, if you will, and uh, the next one that's the, 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 the 220, or I don't know exactly, but at least it is, uh, um, it is on sale now, and it's a cool piece. Well, I, I, have you ever seen an ugly UREC? Have you ever seen an UREC you go like, oh, this is, this is ass? No. I, I think that, that if, you, if you look at the EMC, which is the experimental Uhrwerk, which is actually one of my big That's favorites. It's so cool. It's a y cool watch. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not beauty in the traditional way, but that goes for Uhrwerk anyway. It no, is. but it's like a machine. It's like a mechanical machine. It's like industrialized timekeeping, uh, timepiece, if you like. And, and the EMC is just radical. It's radical. Yeah. Absolutely. So, next one, uh, also launched this week, the Tag Heuer. Yeah, Friedrich Arnaud is keeping himself awfully busy. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I must admit, it's a cool watch. I was, you know, I, I think when, when Biva was, uh, was in charge of the, of the watchmaking group at the LVMH, I thought he, was, uh, he would ublunize everything. Yeah. And, you know, we were used to seeing a lot of, uh, of novelties, and I think Zenith was also on it, uh, which I was good for Zenith. Zenith is definitely has become somewhat of a household name. Yeah. Yeah. Takoya has always been there. Takoya has always been one of the largest chronograph makers, chronograph uh, model makers, and of course very much and always inspired by speed. And what we have here is a chronograph. Yep. It's the it's Takoya the Carrera RS 2.7, and for the car lovers yeah. amongst us, the Carrera RS 2.7 is from 1973 mm. and is regarded still as the best 911 version ever because of the, the, the beautiful mix between lightness, purity and speed. It is, it is a beautiful car and uh, actually this is a collab between Porsche and, and Tag Heuer to create this watch. 500 pieces in steel, 250 in gold. Yeah, and they introduced it in Paris and I think they invited uh, uh, people, journalists, friends of the house, etc., influencers, whatever you call them, uh, were driving around in Porsches of different generations around in Paris. Yeah, actually, I know someone with a Carrera Aeros 2.7, and he was there. Yeah, he exactly. So, so yeah. there's friends yeah. of the house uh, as well. Yeah. But what I do like about it is the the way they included the middle case. Uh, so it's like the it, it looks like on the on the on the side spoiler of a Porsche. Yeah. So they actually put that on the side of the Carrera, of the middle case. We're going to show a picture right here. Yeah. Uh, and then again, also, it goes on the, the, on the metal strap. The funny thing is I noticed the strap on this one where it also says Porsche on the hardware. That is a strap that you usually call a seatbelt NATO strap, if you like, because of the more square hardware and a little bit thicker than a NATO strap of nylon. This is also nylon, but... It's a so the, the wholesome the, you know everything around this Carrera screams very much the 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 car it was influenced uh, from or yeah. by if you like, and I think the color scheme they, they could have done a lot of crazy stuff you know the former Porsche they did the 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 dial uh, had a finish like asphalt uh, you know from the from the roads uh, it. It was a cool look, but it was also maybe a little too much. It was maybe a little OTT. However, this new Carrera with Porsche is is pretty elegant, and I think the 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 details are they are interpreted really elegantly. Yeah, yeah. It's not a watch personally I would wear because I don't drive Porsche. I drive a Volvo and a Land Rover, uh, but. Um, it's nonetheless, it's a really good looking piece. 
Uh, and I know it seems to be really showing his strength. Uh, of course, the, 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 the son of uh, Bernard Arnault, the, the owner of Elvia Marsh yeah. Group, super powerful. Yeah. And the numbers coming from Elvia uh, Marsh in terms of that time, uh, the timepiece they produce are really, really good. Yeah, they're doing well. They're, they're doing, doing extremely well. well. And I, I, I fully agree with you, especially regarding this watch. It's fresh. It is not over the top, as you mentioned. It's fresh, it's definitely. Sti it's yeah. still, and that's always the balance you have to find. You mentioned I w it's not my watch because I'm, I'm not driving a Porsche. That's always the challenge when you combine a, an iconic car with a watch that you 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 scare off people who are not necessarily mm. who li maybe like the car but think, okay, I have to drive one to own this watch or to have this watch. I think. I, I would be interested, at least in the steel one, I think it's a good proposition, especially with the Caliber uh, 02 yeah. uh, uh, automatic movement. It, yeah, it the really, Hoyo 02, yeah. Yeah, it really looks beautiful. So, yeah. so uh, but uh, yeah, welcome addition uh, on the Takoya line. Yeah, it's it's really cool. And and, and, and it's it's good to see, you know, our good friend Guy Bouvet, he's, he's working with Takoya today, and he's very thrilled about uh, the watches coming out these days. Yeah. And of course, having a look in the museum, it's a lot about speed, it's a lot about Formula One, it's a lot about Porsche, it's a lot about fast cars uh, through, through one uh, that breathes, uh, yeah. decades already. Yeah. So of course, the Carrera is one of the milestones of, uh, of one of the cornerstones of Takoya. Of course, named after the, the Mexican-US uh, race. It's the during the- Carrera Panamericana. Exactly, yeah. 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 Um, now we go to some longtime friends from uh, Glashütte Original. Oh yeah, they launched. We all know the CQ. We were actually already working with them back in 2019. We saw the, the early drawings of the, the CQ. Early drawings. We didn't like it. We no. thought it was so wrong, so awfully wrong. Yeah. But then, live. What a gorgeous piece. Apparently, we were wrong. <laughs> yeah, we were totally wrong, thankfully. And, yeah. thankfully. But now, the uh, next phase in the CQ uh, um, uh, lineup is uh, launched. It's the chronograph. It's actually a flyback chronograph. Yeah. What no, do you think? Oh, I like it. I like it. Of course, you know, it's not following any trend because it's 43.2 millimeters. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a gorgeous piece. And if, if you are... If you're frightened about the size on paper, you need to try it on. Uh, and I think, of course, we do know that that Glasgow Original, they know their dials. Yeah. Uh, they moved their dial factory actually to to Glasgow. To Glasgow. Yeah. yeah. From Fortheim. Yeah. From Fortheim yeah. in Germany and in a uh, well, different part of Germany, and now they moved it to Glasgow. So they're integrating a lot of the production right now, and they are world champions in. Um, in dial making. What I really do like, and, and it's a funny thing, it can be a difficult watch to take the pictures of because of the domed uh, crystal of the watch, the sapphire crystal. Yeah. You get this distortion in the numerals, but then again, that makes the, the watch alive, if you like. And That's this always one, the challenge on the photography. That, 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 that Super, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. always like, people are like, what happened? Uh, what's wrong with the picture? What's wrong with the watch? Did the numerals, did, they, did the indices, did they melt? Nope, that's what it looks like. That's you know, what it looks like. Turn it around. And that's really cool. It gives a watch a very specific character um, that that I really like. I mm. must admit, and I would like to have your opinion on that as well. You uh, mentioned the size. Yeah. The original CQ is thirty-nine point five, yeah. which is I had it on my wrist several times. Yeah. It's it's an excellent proposition. Yeah. What if a thirty-five, thirty-nine point five millimeter chronograph? What would you think? It's funny because this morning I posted a, a 39.5 uh, CQ uh, in gold on my Instagram okay. account. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's a gorgeous piece. I think it's, it's elegant yet rocket, uh, sporty yet formal. Uh, it's a really cool watch on that textile strap that I know divides the waters, if you like, yeah. pun intended. Yeah. Uh, but I think the, 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 the larger one deserves the chronograph. The smaller one should stay at is because it's that is an interpretation of the 1969 version the original space yeah. Spacey matic yeah. yeah. uh, that came out it was it was the first diver that came out of glass Ritter back then yeah. and i think it's very true to the original design so i think if you in if you put a chronograph in that you kind of you you provoke the pedigree 
of the watch. So I'm, I'm happy that they have the larger, the panorama date, uh, and now of the 43.2 with a chronograph because it suits it so well. You have enough space on the dial uh, for the chronograph indicators. And I'm not saying it's a perfect watch, but the proportions of the 43.2 uh, CQ chronograph uh, panorama date is is just it's 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 just it really works well. I have to admit that. And the good thing is we will be traveling to Glashütte pretty soon. Yes, later we're this month. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna have hands-on experience and yeah. definitely we'll share it with you, of course. I have one tiny problem with this watch. Okay. Um, when you look at the date of the normal. Panorama date, yeah. uh, uh, CQ, 43.2. The date is, you know, on the side. Yeah. They put the date here above the six marker. And I think it's, a chronograph is somewhat of a busy watch already. Mm -hmm. So I think this provokes the legibility a little bit because I know they're so good at the dials. But on this one, I would have left out the six and instead positioned the date, the date where, the where the six marker is right now. Good point. Uh, of course, it it, it, it it challenges the size of the date wheel, but I don't know if it's possible. We, we can ask to ask uh, Roland. Roland is the CEO of Glass Suit Original, but what is really cool about Roland, not only is a, he's a really nice guy, but he also, he's a trained watchmaker. He is. So he knows. You know, the first time we met him, he came in a, in a lab coat. And usually, you know, you don't see CEOs in lab coats. It was not a suit, it was a lab it coat. It was a lab coat, so, was, you know, uh, that indicates he's a watchmaker. Not a tool maker, because that's different color. Yeah, 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 he's a watchmaker. Coat, yeah. And 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 uh, I think we all agree, Glashütte Original is a watchmaker's brand. Yeah. It's about the quality and, and of, of, of their watchmaking skills that they that they demonstrate in the beautiful pieces. But look at that deep blue. We're just going to share a picture of the of the CQ yeah, yeah, chronograph yeah, yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. The deep blue of the dial and the matching uh, uh, turning bezel is just gorgeous, stunning. And again, with the textile strap in the same color. This, to me, looks like a beautiful tailor-made suit, if you like, from Italy. Uh, it's, it's just really, really pretty. Okay, now we're moving awfully close to uh, the, the brand that we discussed last week in a podcast, Parmigiani. Yes. Um, and I, I think we should do it briefly now because we already dedicated a lot of time last week. But sure. they launched the, the, the Parmigiani Tonda PF in three different versions on a leather strap, only in combination with gold. So you have the Tonda PF uh, gold with leather strap, you have the Tonda PF chronograph, and we have the annual calendar. Um, actually, I had a discussion on Instagram earlier this week when the, when I posted the watch, also referring to the to the date. A guy was asking me, "What do you think? Honestly, what do you think on the date they position at four at the chronograph?" Post? Oh, the chronograph! Yeah. I thought you yeah. meant the Tonda no, PF. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's that's a regular discussion because we have fans of having a date on your watch, and we also have fans of having no date. That's an everlasting discussion, of course. Yeah, but I. But I... I think this is, um, I think it, on, on the chronograph, it does not interfere with the chronograph indices, with the subdials. No. So it, it, it comes out on its own. Would it been nice, if you look at the, at the dial layout of the chronograph, you know, all the indices, all the numbers, all the numerals of the chronograph are indicated within the subdials. Yeah. You could, of course, have put the, the, the date at six, but then that would have interfered with the 30 in the, in the uh, subdial of the, of the chronograph. But I'm not necessarily a fan of a date on a chronograph. I think the Daytona solves it really, really well. Yeah. Uh, and again, if we think about uh, the CEO of, uh, of Parmigiani Guido, you know, he, he's a fan of, of uh, purity. Yeah. And I could see him taking away the date simply because it just makes the watch, watch perfect and the legibility just makes it, it, it a gorgeous, beautiful, uh, pure chronograph, uh, chronograph watch. See, yeah. another great example is the Friede Constant we did. Yeah. Where the date yeah, is actually a, a subdial. That's a beautiful That's on a chronograph, yeah. I think, is the best 
possible solution to integrate a date feature on a chronograph. I still love our the, the piece we did. Yeah, it's, it's we did. because it's, we did that out of purity. Yeah. You know, our, our approach to Freddy Constant was make us the most pure chronograph. So we took away the rail, <coughs> the outer rail of the, of the dial and made it into a more pure dial inspired by the dials that sits on chronograph when they go to Kosk, where there's nothing on it, but you definitely, you, you are not in doubt that this is a chronograph. Um, and it's so, timeless, it's yeah. timeless looks. But I think, I do think your suggestion on, on what, what you just mentioned with the glass shooter already now, to put the date window at the six and remove the six, that might also be something. Um, yeah, but, but yeah. And we also have it with other brands, they put it towards the 12th, like, like uh, I think Lange is doing it. No, I don't know. Uh, but, um, yeah, but they also have the outsize uh, date. Uh, but I think if you look at, if we just go back to the glass suit uh, one second, yeah, you have to you have to imagine it's a it's a B compax. Yeah. So they don't have the third sub register. Yeah. So um, they could have. Instead, they could have done, as, as we did on the Friede Constant, you could have added the date with that down there. Yeah. But they have so much space down there that, you know, a big date fits. Fits. It works. It fits the dial. Yeah. Because otherwise, people go like, well, there's a little empty space down there. But now it's definitely not an empty space. But seeing the date and the six underneath, to me, it's not as elegant as if you had a third subdial with a date indicator. Okay, something my opinion. Something completely off topic. You mentioned B Compax, and I'm thinking Universal Genève. Yeah. I checked their website. There, something's happening there. I see watches. Really? Yeah. And they're old watches. It's a bit like Le Roi. May maybe they're selling out old stock, but at least there is more traction and more happening than a yes, few years I ago. Yes, I saw that. Yeah. That beautiful chronograph with yeah. the tourbillon. Yeah. Or is it just a tourbillon? No, not a tourbillon. Tourbillon. We have we have to get back because we yes. all know Universal Genève is one of those. It's a dormant brand, dormant gems yeah. that needs to be resurrected, uh, and maybe that will happen. Listen, let, let, yeah. let, let's just stick to Parmigiano yeah, because yeah, yeah, they sure, also sure. introduced this gorgeous uh, rose gold uh, Tanda PF um, of rose gold with a strap, which is is a combination that that personally I'm I'm very fond of. Uh, you know, with the integrated bracelet, of course, we, we love the integrated bracelets. But this is also a very elegant piece. We tried it on when we visited uh, the HQ uh, two months ago. And if you look at the date of this one, uh, <laughs> it, it sits at six. And to me, you you don't need the date. It, it, so going back to the GMT Rattrapant, uh, it doesn't have a date. It doesn't have an A and P end indicator because Gide, he says, you know where you're traveling to, yeah. east or west. Yeah. And I think if I wear such an elegant watch like the Tonda PF in rose gold on a strap, I don't care about the date. I just want to feel outrageously elegantly dressed with this watch around my wrist. Don't stress me out with the date. I don't care. Yeah. I'm driving my, my beautiful restored uh, Porsche 356 around the, the Lake Como, uh, going to see my mistress in this wonderful mountain uh, uh, little bunk house. And I don't care if it's the 7th or the 28th. I don't care. I just look at my wrist and go like, I'm yeah, good. But in that situation, you can also remove the hands because you don't care. Now we're talking Airbus. <laughs> we're <laughs> yeah. still sticking yeah, to yeah, the yeah, bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Where you press exactly. and then, uh, is it called time, temps perdu or something like that? Time disappears. Time suspendu. Or suspendu, suspendu, yeah. Suspendu, that's it, yeah. And you press on the crown, uh, a, a, a pusher somewhere, and the, the hands just go to an odd position of no time at all. And the concept behind that watch is that when you are having a good time, you don't want to be reminded about how close to closing hours you actually are. And once you press the, the, the pusher again, the actual time actually shows. I thought when Hermes came out with that watch, I was like, I know you've been doing watches for a hundred years, but this is great. This is great. This is really cool. The power of simplicity. And that brings me back to Uruk, to the very origins of Uruk, the 101. The best guess you could have on reading the time on that one is it's somewhere between eight, nine and eight. 
Yeah, exactly. It's somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah. Because we couldn't care less. We're having a good time anyway. Sure. Um, okay, well, we went through a lot of stuff. I don't know what the timing is right now. We still have uh, uh, launches this week from Satina, from IWC, from Ralph, Ralph Lauren, Lauren yeah. Louis yeah. Manet, the yeah. beautiful, what was the name? The, um, the, um, Kaya, Baya. Maya. 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 Yeah. yeah. So a lot of we stuff. Are 25 minutes in. 25 minutes 25, in. Okay. So actually, we uh, we spent too much time on yeah. the beautiful watch we discussed. But Listen, we... let, let, let's just yeah. talk about the the Ralph Lauren because okay, okay, yeah, Ralph yeah, Lauren. Yeah. I, I have one favorite of Ralph Lauren watches. That's the stir up. I think that that's that's a that's a bit of of Cartier tank on it, and yet not at all. It's a bit of of Cesar Le Coultre Reverso, but yet not at all. It's a stir up, like you you know you put your boot into that when you mount the horse, and. You know, it comes as a time only as a chronograph as well, and it's a gorgeous piece. Of course, there's also the teddy with the, you know, the very famed yeah, uh, with teddy uh, bears, yeah, with teddy yeah, bear yeah, of, of Ralph yeah, Lauren. Yeah. There's probably one holding a Negroni, wearing a tuxedo. That fun. That is a fun watch. It's not very expensive. Really cool watch, and I like it when Ralph Lauren comes out with something that is fun and amusing and goes extremely well with someone's fashion. Now it's coming up with a Polo Vintage six, uh, 67. Um, and when you look at it, it has this wonderful creamy dial and enlarged numerals. There's definitely something vintage about it, but it just looks really, really great on that double layered tan leather strap. And I think that um, Ralph Lauren being a fashion boy, I think he could do a lot more with his straps. And thankfully he does. Uh, and again, with the Polo Vintage uh, 67, it just looks really, really good on what I would call a Spartacus strap. Of course, it's not the name. It's probably called a double layer leather strap. Have a look at it right here. Let's talk about Satina. For sure. For the sure. DS Plus. Yeah, for sure. You I went mean, there, yeah. Uh, Satina was the first watch I ever received from my parents when I was nine years old. I was very proud. It had this very distinct tourneau shape watch, which is why I like the new style, if you like, of the DS Plus. Yeah. Marshall was uh, introducing the watch, and basically what you can do, you have one watch and four different looks. So you pop out the watch. You have two screw crowns yeah. that tightens um, the watch. When, when you pop in the watch itself, you pop it into the middle case. Yeah. So you have different watches. You have gold steel, well, it's bicolor. You have a, a, you know, a round watch. You have a, a tonneau, like my first watch in 79. And it's uh, with the Powermatic 80. And the funny thing is, the O-ring that holds the watch, yeah. except for the two crowns, is made of bioceramic. Who else wears, uh, uses bioceramic? Uh, we have heard that before. Swatch does, yes. right? So, the, to me, I was, I was wondering, if, if you have that and it somewhat keeps the watch in the case, there must be some wear to it. But then again, you secure them also with the screws. With screws, yes. yeah. As always, you know, Satina has been a very popular brand within the Scandinavian countries for a very long time. Yes. And I yes. asked uh, uh, Mark Allen, the new CEO, he's been there two, for two years. I asked him, why is that? And it turns out that Satina made 50,000 watches for Volvo in 1977 when Volvo had the anniversary. So, and, and then I was talking to, uh, uh, to Robert Jan of Fotello, and we were talking about that. We started to Google it. And yes, the blue ribbon uh, Satina has a beautiful Volvo anniversary case bag on it. That's funny. It's like a 500 euro watch, if, if you want to Google it now, if you, if you want to eBay it right now. But imagine that it was given to people who worked with Volvo. But at the same time, it, 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 it the laid a huge fundament in the Scandinavian area in terms totally, of... Totally, totally. And that's probably, if you had your first one in 79, that somehow, I don't know if you chose it yourself or your parents bought it for you, but... I think my parents bought it, bought it for me. Yeah. But, you know, it's... it's so, again, <laughs> Satina, of course, is, is somewhat entry-level. You know, they're using the Powermatic, which yeah. is a, a Swatch Group, uh, Swatch group yeah. movement. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Tissot uses it as well and, 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 and other brands you know, within the group. But Satina makes it fun. And I asked, I asked Mark, because I was afraid that when you press it out, it goes to the floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? And I happen, said, yeah. why didn't you introduce it with a quartz? And he goes, well, um, mechanical watches are in demand. 
Yeah, we wanted to stop at 25. Technical but now it's, failures, but yeah, we, have, we have to be limited. We yeah. have to be, yeah. 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 So okay. anyway, the coffee was really good today. Thank you to the brothers. And thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, make sure you uh, tune subscribe in. and tune in next week. Yes, please do. Bye-bye. Have a great week.